Good morning. I'm Trent Jager. I'm the general chair of uh, the 26th annual uh, NDSS conference, and I'm uh, honored to be here to welcome you to the conference. So pleased to see you all early in the morning. So we have a great program for you today. Alina is going to talk momentarily about how the program evolved and all the work that went into that. But I'm going to uh, highlight some of the other things that are going on in the program. Um, of course, yesterday we had the, uh, the workshops, and I hope a number of you, or heard a number of you, uh, participated in those workshops, and those went quite well, so thank you for, for that. I want to thank uh, Matthias Pyer and uh, Julia Fonti for setting up the workshops, being the uh, workshop uh, co-chairs this year. Tonight at uh, 520, um, we're going to have a, a student grant meet and greet. Uh, we had 21 students this year who've received travel grants from uh, ISOC, uh, uh, sponsored that this year. Um, there was a committee uh, led by Haya Schulman with uh, Justin Kepos, uh, Lucas Davi, Adam Dupay, and Hayward Vijay Akumar who chose the, uh, the 21 participants. So uh, thanks to ISOC for uh, sponsoring that. On, uh, after that, we'll have the poster session at 5.30. Don't miss that. Uh, Adam Aviv and uh, Gong Tan co-chaired the uh, selection of the posters. So come by, take a look, chat with people, see what's out there, what's coming down the pipe. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to uh, have a social hour. And so please participate in that. And after the social hour, we're going to have something new this year. We're going to have a brief half hour a community meeting for the public to talk about a couple of uh, issues of importance, I think, to the broad community. Uh, one is the uh, excellent uh, attendance increase that we've had this year. Um, I don't have the exact numbers at the moment, but well over 500 people have registered for the, the conference, which is a great thing, um, but that has some impacts that we'll discuss. Also, we'll talk about the future of submissions to NDSS. You may have noticed that other uh, conferences have changed their uh, number of submission deadlines and uh, frequency and all of this sort of thing. And so we'll, uh, we'll discuss how uh, our NDSS community wants to uh, examine this, this challenge, collect some information that we'll then uh, bring to the steering committee to discuss further. Uh, on Wednesday, we have the awards ceremony, and so hopefully you'll be able to attend that. We have a new award this year for uh, not only the best paper awards, but we have a new award for uh, uh, papers uh, that, that have uh, met the uh, test of time. Um, so it's called the test of time award for papers in the past that have uh, achieved major significance in the community. We want to recognize those papers as well. So um, in addition, I want to thank uh, Karen O'Donohue and, uh, and the uh, AMS folks for making this basically run uh, at all. Uh, it's not me who's uh, making this really happen in an in a effective way. I just sort of um, stand here and tell you stuff. Um, so I want to thank the whole organizing committee. So we give the organizing committee a hand. And in addition for the record attendance and the record number of submissions, uh, all, of the per all of the efforts that you guys have put in, uh, go give yourselves a hand for making this a great conference. So now I'm going to turn it over to Alina to talk about how the program came about. Good morning, everybody. Um, on behalf of Dongyan, uh, Zhu, and myself, I'd like to welcome you to NDSS 2019. Um, where are the... Okay, sorry. <laughs> to advance the slides. Okay, so this is the 26th edition of the Network and Distributed System Security Symposium, um, and uh, uh, a conference that established itself as the premier conference in uh, networking and system security research. We're very excited to have three days ahead of us of invited talks and a wonderful program. And I'm going to talk to you in the next 10 minutes about how we selected the program for this year, and I'm going to give you a few highlights. So let me start with some historical statistics, and thanks to David Balanson for providing these graphs. So this shows a historical perspective on NDSS in the last 20 years. 
And what we display on this graph is the number of submitted papers and the number of accepted papers, as well as the acceptance rate. And one thing that's immediate here is the trend, the growth of NDSNs, and that is obvious in the last few years. We see a tremendous growth for this conference. Now let's look into more details in the, in the last 10 years. So this graph shows the number of submissions in the last 10 years. And this year we reached a record number of submissions of 521 papers, uh, which is an increase of a factor of more than three times compared to 2010. And compared to two years ago, it's a 20% increase. But if you look at the acceptance rate, it tends to be fairly stable, fairly consistent between 16 and 20%. Now, if we look at the number of accepted papers over the last 10 years, we reached another record this year with the largest program to date for NDSS. We have 89 high quality papers that were accepted and will be presented during the next three days. And this represents a four times increase compared to 10 years ago. Can you imagine that we had a conference 10 years ago with only 24 papers and it was considered a large conference at the time. <laughs> and compared to last year when we had 71 papers, now it's a 25% increase. So, um, so now let me describe to you how we got to this outstanding program, the 89 high quality papers that we selected. So our jobs as program committee co-chairs started by selecting first the program committee. And we are very fortunate to put together the largest program committee to date, 81 members, um, uh, with diverse representation from a number of different countries and three continents. And we also try to balance representatives from academia, industry, and the government. Uh, there was a tremendous amount of work for everybody on the program committee. Every PC member reviewed between 17 and 19 papers over a period of four months. Um, compared to last year's, uh, to last year, we, all, we decided to keep a review task force, which was very useful. So this is a, a committee, a small committee of senior PC members whose jobs was mainly to review the reviews, right? So they read all the reviews that were written by the PC, and they ensured that the, that the feedback that we sent back to authors was high quality, was actionable, and constructive. Uh, in addition to last year, we added this year a mandatory response to author rebuttal. And this was only for papers that advanced to round two. So many times authors submit the rebuttals and they have no idea if, if it was considered by the pro program committee at all. So we ask everybody to carefully read the rebuttal and to provide the authors a response to the rebuttal so that they were uh, ensured that it was taken into account. During the whole process, we strive for positive and constructive discussion, trying to identify the strengths in every submission rather than the weaknesses. So now let me describe the review timeline. So on August 7, this was the conference deadline. We received 521 papers. We had a record already. Um, and there were a few papers that were not well formatted, so we, we removed those, and we are left with 512 papers that were fully reviewed by the program committee. Now, we started with the first round of reviews over about seven weeks, and at the end of the first round, we decided to advance in the next round a number of 264 papers, and we sent early reject notification to authors on October 2nd, which was very early, less than two months from the submission deadline, including uh, a lot of feedback for them to revise their papers. Then we continued to round two. We added additional reviews to these papers. We had a lot of online discussion, and we decided to pre-accept a set of 47 papers. These are the green papers on the graph. And then we continued the online discussion, and we identified a set of 81 papers to be discussed at a PC meeting on November 2nd. So this year, the program committee meeting was organized at Northeastern University in Boston on November 2nd. It was a one-day event with two tracks, so we kept the same format that was introduced two years ago, which was very effective, because we could actually discuss in a single day 81 papers. And if we look at the acceptance rate at a PC meeting, it was higher than 50%, which is very, very large, right? So we accepted an additional set of 42 papers, and together, this gives the program that we're gonna see at the conference, 89 papers whose camera ready was submitted on December 17th. 
And the acceptance rate for this year, it's in line with what we've seen in the last 10 years. It's about 17%. Now let me give you quickly some statistics about the papers that appear in the program. So first, let's look at the author representation. Uh, from the 89 papers, there are more than 450 authors. And this graph shows the geographical representation. I don't know if that's visible. But um, one point here is that it spans about 25 countries across five continents. And the top three countries are US, Germany, and Korea. Um, now let's, let's look at the topics of those papers, and these are the topics for the accepted papers as identified by the authors at the time of the submission. And I use here three colors. Um, the, the blue color are topics that have similar frequency to last year. Um, green, the green color are topics that have seen an increase in popularity, and the red color are topics that have seen a decrease in popularity. So here one observation is that uh, there are some topics that seem to get more and more popular in the community, and we see that reflected in the NDSS program. For example, the software firmware analysis, or trustworthy computing, uh, blockchains and cryptocurrencies, or security of critical infrastructures. So a few highlights for this year's program. Uh, as I mentioned, we break a lot of previous records in terms of the largest number of attendees ever, more than 500 regist uh, people registered to NDSS, the largest program to date, 89 papers. Uh, we're going to have two parallel tracks today and tomorrow, and a single track on Wednesday. We already had four uh, workshops yesterday. I hope people were able to attend those. Uh, we're very excited and are looking forward to our keynote speaker, Deborah Frinke from NSA. Uh, and as Trent mentioned, for the first time, uh, we're organizing a public meeting tomorrow at 6.30 to discuss some of the issues that are pressing in our community. So everybody is invited to attend. So there are many people that contributed their time, hard work, and dedication to make this event happen. And in particular, I would like to recognize the following. So first, uh, my program committee co-chair, Dong Yang Zhu. Uh, Dong Yang put a lot of time and effort into this, and it's been a real pleasure to work together. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> and he will be co-chairing NDSS 2020 as well. Um, then I would like to, to thank the general chair, Trent Jagger, and the previous general chair, Luyo Bauer, for always being available and providing a lot of advice for organizing this conference. So let's give them a round of applause. Uh, then I'd like to recognize the steering committee of MDSS and also the program committee, everybody that worked together to make this program happen. Uh, I would like to recognize four PhD students at Northeastern University that helped me organize the program committee meeting on November 2nd. And uh, two of them are actually in the audience, Talha and Giorgio, so please talk to them if you meet them. <laughs> I would like to recognize David Balanson, who's officially the... <laughs> So he's officially the publication chair on the conference website. That's his official title, so he takes care of the proceedings. But unofficially, he's the conference historian. He keeps all the different statistics of NDSS. He has all the information. So everything you're interested in finding out, you can ask David. And uh, last but not least, I'd like to um, thank to Karen O'Donoghue from uh, ISOC for all the work in organizing and in interfacing with uh, ISOC and uh, with the program committee and the steering committee. Thank you, Karen, for the, all the work you're doing. <laughs>
And uh, of course, there are many others that are behind the scenes and they are responsible for making things run smoothly, but uh, I don't know all their names. So um, with that, I'd like to welcome you to NDSS. Please enjoy the conference. And I'm looking forward to meeting many of you and discussing about uh, some uh, interesting topics here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alina and Dong Yan and the rest of the, uh, the program committee um, for your great work uh, putting together this program that will enjoy this next three days. Um, and by the way, if you're interested, we, uh, we certainly have a lot of uh, opportunities for helping out in the organization of NDSS. So if you'd like to uh, participate, please feel free to let me or others know and we'll be happy to, to bring you in in some form. Um, so it is my uh, great pleasure to uh, introduce the keynote speaker, Deborah Frinke from the uh, National Security Agency. She, is the, she leads a research directorate in NSA for uh, oh, about five years. And she also serves as uh, advisor, um, the NSA science advisor and NSA innovation champion. So Deborah is going to present her, her perspective, and this is based on a career where she has seen computer security from, I would say, all three dimensions, the government dimension, obviously, but also as an academic, as well as leading a, a startup company. And so uh, Deborah was a full-time professor at the University of Idaho before becoming a uh, chief scientist for, uh, at uh, the Pacific Northwest National Lab, and she also launched a successful startup company in the area of network security. So she's gonna to talk to us today about modern challenges for cyber defense, and so uh, please welcome Dr. Deborah Frinke. Thank you. Have to excuse me a minute while I find where my clicker is and the mic and get the right one. The right one. Okay. Hold your ears. How's that? Is that good? No. All right. Thank you. All right. We'll try it again. You know, I'm not secret here. It is okay to record my voice and project 